Hi, and thank you for joining me for this presentation about the trust.txt framework. The idea of a txt file has been around for more than a dozen years now. The best known example is the robots.txt, which is just a little instruction to search engines to say, look, at this is the stuff that there's no sense in categorizing for your search engines. So you see the middle one here is disallow TMP. We've got a bunch of temp files on our server. There's no sense in you indexing those. So this is a little message to the search engines to tell them what not to search. And it's a system that's worked well for more than a dozen years. There's a new one that's come along, ads.txt, that came from the fine people at the IAB Tech Lab. And if you go to mostly media sites like newyorktime.com slash ads.txt, you'll see these are the ad networks that New York Times actually works with. So if somebody's out there trying to scam you and tell you that they can get ads on New York Times and they're not part of this file, then you know that that's a scam and that system works really well. It has for a couple of years now. Both of those have worked well in the background and we're trying to emulate the success with a new framework we're calling trust.txt, a reference framework from journalist.net. Now, the idea behind this is that really the government should not decide who is and who is not a journalist. And going along with that is the idea that the platforms also should not be the ones deciding who is and who isn't a journalist. The problem is that right now, the platforms essentially do this. They are the ones that are figuring out what is a news site and what is not a news site. And there's a couple of problems with that. The platforms and the advertisers struggle to see three crucial things. You can see the list here. Number one, the existing relationships that signal trust. If there's a publisher that belongs to an association and both of them have been around for dozens, if not, you know, a hundred years, that relationship is a great signal of trust, but it's essentially invisible to the platforms right now. Also, the ownership of other URLs. Platforms, advertisers, they don't really know who owns what. Uh, you know, you can figure it out as a person, but as a mechanized system, there's not a way to do that. And then also control over social channels. And this is important. A lot of uh, scammers and uh, foreign governments trying to undermine democracy are trying to create social channels, Twitter accounts and YouTube accounts and that sort of thing that take the name of a re reputable publisher and use it to try to boost their own signal. And it turns out it's false. But the platforms don't have any way to know that a particular Twitter account is not actually controlled by the media property that it claims to be controlled by. So those are the problems that we solve. And so here's what it looks like. You've got a trust.txt file on a site of, of a, a paper like the Durango Herald, which was the first paper I worked for when I got out of college. And in their trust.txt file, they would put who they belong to. So theoretically, they could put that they belong to the Colorado Press Association, they belong to the Associated Press, and that also they belong to journalist.net. We'll talk about that in a second. Then they could also talk about who they control. So the Durango Herald Media Company, Ballantine Communication, also owns Adventure Pro and DGO Mag and a couple other titles. And this would be a way for them to show that they have that control. And then they could also show in their text file what are their official social channels. So if somebody puts up a Twitter account and says that it's the Durango Herald Twitter account, you'd be able to check to be able to see that, in fact, it is not the Durango Herald Twitter account because the only official ones are the ones that are controlled by the Durango Herald, and those are listed here. Similarly, the Colorado Press Association, uh, which is a great association that's been around forever and the Durango Herald belongs to, could put what associations they belong to, like they belong to um, the newspapers.org, and then they could list all of their members, right, starting with the Akron News Reporter and going on down through all of the members that the Colorado Press Association has. So in short, the idea here is that it's time for journalists to start calling our own shots. And that's why we've created journalist.net, which does essentially two things. The first is it is the caretaker for the uh, specification system, the reference document of how to use the trust.txt file. And we'll be the ones that will be managing that, but it'll be a completely open document published under Creative Commons. And then the other thing that journalists will do is list out all of the members of Journalist, which will be a nonprofit member-owned organization. And on that list will be a starting point for any web crawlers that want to know who's out there. And they can use this as the starting point to see who is using a trust.txt file. So that's it. That's how it works. If you have any questions, please be in touch on journalist.net. And thanks for helping us to take off.